Thank you very much for inviting me to make a presentation here on uh, the current policy review process uh, related to arts, culture, and heritage, of which uh, events, live events, uh, uh, technical uh, services, and production is an integral part. It has been part of the revision of the white paper since the first draft. And it has undergone certain uh, shifts and movements within the architecture of the white paper. So what I would like to do um, is to give you an overview of the white paper without going into detail and then to pause uh, a little bit around uh, this particular sector because this is what it is all about. The reason why I um, want to give an overview of the white paper is to establish a sense of the importance, the critical importance of uh, this sector for the entire uh, domain, straddling all the arts uh, and heritage as well as its importance in its own right. The DG and uh, Andrea, we share, we share uh, uh, the same first names. In fact, my daughter's first name is Andrea. I'm Andres, of course. Has spoken about the collaboration between uh, local governments in Britain, and similarly within the domain of the arts, the interrelationship between the different disciplines and the different pro professions is critical for an effective and efficient system. The uh, DJ, I think, referred to the problem of fragmentation, the disconnectedness in uh, the policy architecture. And it is necessary for practitioners who specialize in particular areas to always look across, around, and behind them to see how their particular disciplines interface with those around them. Because ultimately, it's the health of the entire sector that contributes to a, a thriving and dynamic uh, arts, culture, and heritage dispensation in the country. And we come from a history in our country of fragmentation, of breaking up society itself into little units, isolating people from each other, communities. So uh, a sense of integration and the potential for collaboration and participation is therefore critical in uh, our policy work. So that is the structure of the presentation. I'll have to race through it because the white paper is extensive. There is a copy I have seen in your, uh, in your uh, bags or in your, your, your handouts of the white paper, which you can uh, peruse. It is the fourth draft that we are looking at. And remember, it's a draft. It's not the final white paper. I'll speak a little bit about the process through which it will go in the uh, in the what is left of this year until its finalization. So there's still room for for inputs and for comments. The um, important thing to 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 keep in mind is the background to the white paper. As you will know, in before 1996. The apartheid government excluded the entire population, which were not classified according to the apartheid privileges, from receiving cultural facilities, from participating in institutions. It was all white cultural policy in South Africa. And more narrowly so, it focused on the interest of one linguistic community that was in power, uh, which ran the institutions and uh, were responsible for, for uh, resourcing 
and implementation. So uh, in 1996, a first attempt was made mainly to democratize the situation, to break down the old institutional frameworks and to create a participatory system and to establish a number of institutions uh, that would be run by the sectors, by the people in the industry, and not by the government officials, uh, but by, by, by actual practitioners through the National Arts Council, the Film Foundation, the Heritage Council, and so forth, and so on. But 20 years have passed, and uh, the White Paper of 1996 was a transitional document. Its main focus was to, 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 to break the monopolies, to open the system, and it had to be revised, I would think, five to 10 years at most within the uh, transitional period, but it's now more than two decades, and that white paper has still not been revised. So situations have changed radically. We're no longer in that situation where we're entering uh, a new era in our history. We're well into uh, the democracy, and things have changed. We had to make changes much, more, uh, much sooner, but we are now in the process of doing that. So the minister appointed a task team, a reference panel it was called, of uh, nine persons uh, with expertise in the various areas to conduct the, uh, the uh, revision. The mandate was to look at the strengths and the weaknesses or the impact the 1996 white paper had, whether it is still relevant to the present situation, and new policies had been developed at uh, other levels, the National Development Plan to begin with, and secondly, the uh, nation building and social cohesion strategy, which was referred to in the introduction. Uh, so policy had to be aligned with these new policies. In 1996, we had the Reconstruction and Development Program, and that was abandoned, as you know, fairly soon after the ANC came into power. And the new macroeconomic policy is now the National Development Plan. And the white paper is also a macro document. It's not a document that focus in great, focuses in great detail on any of the subsectors. It looks at the broad cultural domain and it highlights the main priorities of each subsector. For implementation, it will require sector-specific strategies and implementation plans. And I see there's already work being done by the Department of Arts and Culture for events and production. There has been a feasibility study and uh, investigations into strategies on how to actually implement it. That would give the sectors opportunities to look in detail what they want to achieve in a phased manner from the implementation phase to the, the successive years to ensure that the policy is, is directed. So uh, the uh, next aspect within the presentation deals with the process. I'm not going to uh, go over that. Basically, in 1996, we had developed what we called in the art sector a participatory process. It was the artists that made the first move. It said, we are not going to allow the political parties to dictate policy to the art sector. Because we've seen what happens to, in Africa, in post-colonial Africa. We've seen what happened in uh, socialist countries. Uh, the revolutionary country, so to speak. Our artists quickly become marginalized, they become imprisoned, they are driven into exile, they are discarded by the new elites. They were used in the struggle for liberation, but once the politicians come to power, they start doing what uh, the previous rulers did, tell the artists, this is how you must write, this is the kind of dances we want to see, this is how you should paint, and so forth and so on, and that we did not want. We wanted a, uh, a 
autonomous, but accountable and transparent process in which the practitioners uh, played the leading role in developing new policies. So that was the, the, uh, the, 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 the participatory process that was developed, and this is the process we followed in the revision. So we went across the country, we consulted with everyone in the provinces, with all the institutions, with other governments, and we worked through several drafts. We are now at the fourth draft, and uh, I'll explain to you at the end what will happen to the fourth draft. The uh, DG had, to some extent, uh, uh, pointed out where we are at the moment. So the uh, white paper itself as a whole consists of a number of chapters. I think there are 15 chapters or so. But it deals with the scope, the objectives, the values, the visions, and the principles. You can study and look that up. It then goes into all the subsectors in chapter four, which is an extensive chapter which covers the performing arts, the visual arts, craft and craft heritage, which includes museums, monuments, and sites, archives, place names, and heraldry. It also includes events and technical skills, uh, arts in the community, local, local uh, uh, services, as was uh, pointed out in uh, Andrea's presentation, as well as various other things. they all listed there. I will give a copy of the PowerPoint presentation to the uh, organizers so you can go through that. It's a kind of map of the larger document. And then it proposes, in chapter 10, a new dispensation. Uh, if you study the white paper of 1996, and you look at what we have in South Africa today, you will see that some things in the white paper was implemented and some were not. The National Arts Council was established, the Film Foundation, Film and Video Foundation was established. But when you look at heritage, the fragmentation that existed uh, before 1994, even though the 1996 white paper uh, 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 recommended or specified that the heritage become integrated. It was never integrated, so uh, that remained a problem. The technical services, in terms of the mandate that was given by the department, was, was not included in that white paper. There's not a word said about it. There's also no provision made for the uh, publishing and information technologies in the, in the white paper. So uh, what we propose now is that there be one council that is in terms of the governance system for the art and audiovisual uh, practices. Film, of course, as you know, has become to some extent uh, uh, obsolete or outdated. But we are not proposing that uh, we collapse the administrative structures of the national arts and uh, film and video or audiovisual practices into one body. It's just the governance structure that will become consolidated into one body. But the two institutions will have different administrations and infrastructure and management. But the arts, as you know, the visual art, the, the creative arts and film have a great deal in common in terms of the skills and areas in which they work. I don't want to go into that. You are all aware of those. And then the National Heritage Council. We have a National Heritage Council in South Africa, but it's standing on its own. And we have a Monuments Council, which is now called the National Heritage Resources Council. And we have the other uh, subdivisions of heraldry. They're all uh, uh, fragmented. And you cannot speak of a National Heritage Council while uh, monuments, place names, and archives are somewhere else. What is this council doing? Like the National Arts Council, which integrates uh, the creative arts across the whole spectrum, 
the National Heritage Council needs to integrate the heritage practices, and they, are, they were not integrated because of the vested interests from the past. And heritage, as you know, in South Africa is a highly politicized and problematic area in relation to the colonial legacy of this country. So there's a resistance to, 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 to create an overarching policy mechanism that will drive transformation, as has been uh, mentioned. And then um, the establishment of a book and publishing development council. There is such a body already, but it has no statutory status. Uh, so that will be brought into the system. And then there's also a, a recommendation for the establishment of a uh, institution. What it will be called is still unclear, but it will focus on uh, technical skills and events. That is fully uh, catered for in the policy. It appears in the white paper on page 39 and 40, and it's also listed where in chapter four, where the, uh, uh, the uh, sectors are, are indicated. And then there's also a very thorny uh, proposal uh, around uh, establishing a institu institution, the national institution and centers across the country focusing on African arts, culture, and heritage research and practices. As you know, a Department of uh, Science and Technology is a custodian of the of IKS, Indigenous Knowledge Systems. So there's a debate going on between whether African uh, knowledge systems or indigenous knowledge systems should be the uh, designation. But in our negotiations, we've uh, settled for a focus in relation to the Department of Arts and Culture with an emphasis on heritage, arts, culture, and heritage, and not the entire knowledge uh, 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 dispensation uh, as conceived in the IKS uh, policy uh, framework. So um, the critical aspect about policy that we have learned over the last uh, uh, 20 years or so is how policy is implemented. Remember we wrote the white paper certain things were implemented, but when it came to heritage, it was not implemented because there was no overview in relation to how policy is operationalized. We also know that uh, crises occur within institutions and uh, the response comes when the crisis has reached a, uh, a, a, a catastrophic proportions because of poor monitoring and evaluation, not to police, but to provide support, to make interventions at a, in, a, in a timely fashion to avoid crises and collapses. So that area is also strengthened in the uh, white paper. So now in this month of May, we'll be doing cluster consultations. These are the departments which uh, have been clustered together to ensure cooperation. One of the things that the white paper stresses is intergovernmental cooperation, both on the horizontal level between departments. Arts, culture, and heritage requires trade and industry, it requires education, it requires tourism, it requires a whole number of other departments to collaborate with in order to strengthen its impact requires international affairs and uh, cultural diplomacy. Almost all the other departments, including home uh, 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 settlements, human settlements, is important for, uh, for this uh, sector. So we stress this uh, aspect of the, uh, the horizontal integration of the sector with other related departments and the vertical integration between national policy, provincial policy, and local policy. And the local policy is critical because that's where 
the people live, that's where the, the, the services are provided. And uh, there has also been weaknesses in respect of this. In fact, uh, when we developed the 1996 white paper, the DG who came in then, and he's a good friend of mine, but we had a bit of a fight, because he insisted that the national, the national has nothing to do with the provincial and so forth and so on, and we know that is, that is not the case. National policy is for the entire population, but how do you get it to the entire population is through the provinces and through local government. So that integration is critical. Um, so uh, once the white paper has gone through the uh, parliamentary process, there will be legislative reviews. The laws will, that govern the system will all have to be reviewed. Um, and uh, then there would be the reorganization of the system and the construction of a new dispensation. And it is at this point where the strategic plans, and I see there are already plans for uh, this sector. Research has been done, a, feasible stu a feasibility study has been done. There's some work going on in craft. In fact, they are in the process of uh, making arrangements for such a study. And there are many other, and, and, and other sectors where uh, this type of detailed work is required. So uh, uh, this gathering is critical for uh, ensuring that the, the provisions in the white paper for, for events and technical services, when it reaches the stage of implementation and legislative construction, that it is designed to meet what the sector needs. Thank you for your attention.